There's been numerous leaks and listings popping up for Intel's upcoming B580 graphics card based on the Arc Battle Mage architecture, the successor to Arc Alchemist. I know a lot of people, including myself, have been quite bullish on Intel's next generation discrete GPUs as we desperately need more competition in this space. Some of the leaks and the specs that we've seen are promising and from the looks of it, Intel may be holding the price to performance crown if this goes well for them. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We've got some exciting news and information to go over pertaining to Intel's next generation Battle Mage GPUs. For a while now, it honestly seemed like Intel just went MIA from the discrete GPU market. We heard some info earlier this year surrounding Battle Mage and then Intel just went quiet about it. And we hadn't heard anything since. With that said, Intel has had their hands full with a lot of things going on with the company. And I mean, we had the whole 14th and 13th gen stability fiasco. There was a lot of restructuring happening within the company with layoffs announced and Intel looking to sell some of its larger assets. So there's been a lot happening with Intel and not all of it's been good news. But now we have some positive information to cover and I've been highly anticipating Battle Mage because what I'm a fan of is competition and getting products that deliver great bang for the buck. From the rumors and some of the information posted on Twitter, it looks like Intel will be kicking off the next generation GPU battle or race from next month. This was posted by Tomasz Goronski and it includes a picture of what seems to be a slide from a marketing deck indicating that Battle Mage will be released in December. And if this slide or leak is legitimate, I am anticipating to see an announcement happening in the first week of December or the second week at the latest as I believe Intel's quiet period starts after like the 15th of December. I could be wrong on that. So no product launches or announcements after that. I think this is a really smart play from Intel. It's what I've been saying AMD should have been doing all these years, beat Nvidia to the market instead of just following their lead. And we'll be discussing pricing later on, but if we have a product that delivers, they don't have to be the fastest, but if it's priced well, is stable, then we'll see many PC gamers being compelled with Intel. As of right now, the $200 to $300 GPU market is basically a mess. We're dealing with GPUs which are ideally just bottom of the barrel, entry level crap disguised as mainstream cards that didn't offer anything tangible for consumers from the last generation, with band-aid solutions sold on top like upscaling and frame generation to make up for the lackluster hardware. So if Intel can capitalize on that void, then I think they'll have a solid winner on their hands for this segment and something that'll do wonders for their market share, which, which they desperately need. Adding on to this, in the past week, we started to see listings of Intel's Arc B580 graphics card show up on popular retailers like Amazon. It got taken down, but video cards do have most of the main information retained. The list listing was specifically from an ASRock model, part of their Steel Legend lineup. And on a side note, I think their Steel Legend cards have looked pretty good with the white aesthetic, but this listing also gave us some important information pertaining to the product specifications. The B580, according to this listing, will have a boost clock of up to 2800 MHz, so that's a nice jump from the A580 for the GPU core. 12 GB of GDDR6 memory on a 192-bit bus, and a whopping 650 watt TDP, which I'm sure is a typo considering it's a two-slot card and only has two 8-pin power connectors. So the max power draw will be up to 375 watts if Intel sets the power limit to that. They could It could be lower and they just put the extra 8 pin on there for, I don't know, overclocking headroom. There was also another listing posted, this one from Azeroth's Challenger series, which is a dual fan two slot design. And this card shows us it only has one 8 pin PCIe connector. So that should tell you that the TDP will be like 225 watts and obviously not 650 watts. That would be absolutely insane. That's 50, 90 levels of performance we're talking about. So yeah, not going to happen. Furthermore, Hardware Lux mentioned that half the caps on the PCIe interface are missing, which means the card is going to be using the PCIe 5.0 x8 specification. Now bandwidth wise, that's equivalent to PCIe 4.0 x16, which is going to be more than ample for this entry level card. Heck, I even tested my 4090 in the past on PCIe 3.0 x16 and found the margins were negligible. However, if you don't use it in a PCIe 5.0 slot, then you're going to get further bandwidth loss. And that might be problematic for many users. Because if you think about it, the types of consumers who are going to be buying this level of graphics card from this segment, they may not have a motherboard with support for PCIe 5.0 as they might be using a lower end board from a few generations ago that has PCIe 4.0 or worse 3.0. And 
AMD has also done this with some of their lower end RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 cards that did cause quite a bit of performance regression in some gaming benchmarks. So keep that in mind if you plan on getting one of these GPUs, then I would highly recommend pairing it with a board that supports PCIe 5.0 just to take full advantage of it. The fact that we're now seeing retail listings and renders from AIBs alludes to an imminent launch in the coming days. Therefore, it corroborates the leak we saw from the user on Twitter. Plus, there was some information data mined off of Intel's own website within documentation for their platform monitoring tech, as well as being listed under their discrete GPU solutions briefly. You don't really see this kind of stuff posted until there's been a launch, or someone must have accidentally put it up on their web pages earlier. They actually could have been ready to go for a while but we also kept on hearing about delays and setbacks. If I recall some info, I had heard from some insiders that Battlemage was supposed to launch in Q1 of this year, and that would have been the most ideal time for them to do so, as that would have been grouped in with the last generation cards, or I guess current gen. But now they're going to be facing an uphill battle, going up against cards like the Blackwell 50 series from NVIDIA and the AMD RDNA 4 series. With Battlemage, Intel is going to have to make a sizable leap, and also deliver on price to performance. There was a leaked Geekbench result, and it's probably a really early engineering sample or the card was in some debugging mode because it shows an inferior result compared to the last generation A580. However, the specs from the results also give us some more information about clock speed figures, compute units, and memory specs which line up with what we saw from the retailer listing. With 20 Z2 cores and clock speeds of around 2.8 gigahertz, I suspect this is going to land pretty close to a 4060 Ti um, around there, you know, and that would be pretty good, which for 1080p gaming and with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, it's still decent. You just got to temper your expectations. You're not going to be path tracing, you're not going to be running max settings. Although I guess you could get some headroom if you're cool with upscaling and I'm sure we'll see some form of frame generation tech from Intel as they don't want to fall behind their competition in the software space as well. Some folks on Reddit were speculating it could land around a 2080 Ti considering a 140V with Z2 cores at 2 GHz scores around 4K points in Time Spy, a B580 with 20 Z2 cores at 2.8 GHz is about 3.5x faster, and the GPU will have higher power headroom, the advantage of its own memory system. But this is all assuming perfect scaling, and I'm hoping that this time around, drivers are solid, but with what we've seen from Intel regarding software blunders this past year, it's kind of hard to remain optimistic. With all that said, what will make or break this thing is pricing. And Momo on Twitter posted a retailer listing for this card at $246. Now, of course, take this with a grain of salt. It could just be a placeholder as nothing is officially confirmed. But my take on this is that for $250, 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and performance similar to a 2080 Ti with new AI features, that's not too bad, all things considered. But I also want to remind you guys that the A580 did launch at a much lower MSRP, so they are bumping up the price. But again, if the performance is there compared to competition, then it's going to it's gonna sell well. It sure as heck is better than a 4060 and RX 7600, that's for sure. Those cards have not dropped in price since they were released, and a 2080 Ti when tuned can actually outperform the 4060 Ti by a decent amount. And the latter still retails on Amazon for $385. And because of this, used 2080 Ti's are also holding their value pretty good. And they actually cost around the same as a new 4060 Ti because they have the larger amount of VRAM and larger memory bus that's so sought after. And this is why I've just been complaining so much about these new GPUs because they've stagnated the market so much. So if Intel, if they can just come in and clean up this mess, deliver that card at $250 with this level of performance, like 2080 Ti's performance, I'm on board, and this will make me pretty optimistic for their higher-end B750 and B770 GPUs as well. But again, this will all come down to how well they're optimizing their drivers. We all know how much of a mess the A-Series was when that launched. It was just horrendous. It really should not have launched in that state. So hopefully they've learned from their past mistakes. As for now, that's going to be wrapping it up for this one, and we'll be touching base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.